Hey, what's up guys, Pablo Munoz here. Today I'm gonna show you a very quick tutorial on how to create a belt or the knot for a belt on your characters. So this image that you can see here is all done with primitives as well as Cmodula. So that's those are the main tools that we're gonna be concentrating on. So let's go ahead and jump straight into ZBrush. So right now I have this uh, pose uh, male character, just a generic one from Character Creator 4. Um, and it's just a simple base mesh, it has a, a relatively nice topology, uh, but it doesn't really matter, you can use anything you want. So the first step would be to essentially bring in or append a cylinder. You can use the insert or the append. Uh, just on a side note, the difference between append and insert is that the insert will insert it right below the selected subtool. So if you have multiple subtools, it will be right underneath that one. And if you click append, it will just do the same action, but it will append it at the end of the subtool list. So let's use insert or either or, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna click on cylinder 3D. Here we go. And I'm gonna also enable polyframe just so that you know which one I have selected. And I'm gonna use the gizmo 3D to just place this roughly in the area of th or the belt area. All right, let's go into solo mode and I'm gonna use uh, symmetry just in this case and the selection tools. And in fact, let me just go ahead and reset the UI so that you can follow along. So I'm gonna go to config. I'm gonna restore the standard UI. And let's go ahead and also go to preferences, go to the cam view and the thumbnail. And I'm gonna turn this on, uh, sorry, turning them off. And that's pretty much it. Let's go also new document. Should have done that before, but that's all right. Here we go. Here is the cylinder. So let's go ahead and hold the control and shift to access the selection tools, go into solo mode. And I'm just gonna select maybe something like this, three rows. And I'm gonna also go to the bottom of the tool palette, click on display properties, click on double. And that way we can see inside. And I'm also gonna go to the geometry palette, go to the modified topology. So let's go to modify topology and I'm gonna click on delete hidden, right? So now all the faces that we had here are hidden and we have a simple loop. Now here is a cool thing that uh, it's another tool I didn't mention, but we're gonna use uh, just, just for fun so that we can kind of like follow the contour of the body, right? So let's go ahead and place this, maybe turn off the symmetry and place this a little bit better, maybe scale that down. Um, and just for the sake of working a little bit better and at least easier to scale that in the Z axis, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna select the body, hold Alt and click on the body. I'm gonna hold the Control and Shift and isolate the arms, Control Shift, click and drag to invert the selection so that we can basically hide those, um, those arms and we can work a bit more comfortably. So let's go back to the belt. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the left tray and let's clear that up. I'm gonna click on the dynamics and I'm gonna drag this in here. And here is, uh, I have already set it up when I was testing this, but um, it's pretty simple. So by default, it should be kind of like this for you, right? So, and this will be a hundred. All right, so these are kind of like the default settings. I'm just gonna set it back in. All right, so the trick here is that we can play with dynamics and you know, watch this kind of like shrink wrap around the body. So if I click on run simulation, it's gonna fall really quickly to the ground, right? Um, because the gravity is very strong. So what I'll do is I'm gonna turn off gravity. So when I click, nothing's gonna happen because there's nothing affecting this model or affecting the, the belt. And instead, what I can do is click on contract, right? So contract is going to contract this towards the body. So if I click run simulation, again, nothing is gonna happen. And that is because we haven't told Seabrush that we want to use that body uh, or that base mesh as the collision volume. So all we have to do is click on collision volume and this number right here is kind of like the distance between the body and the belt. So if I set it to the default, which should be one for you, let's go ahead and recalculate this button right here, click on run simulation and you'll see how to sort of like starts shrinking quite a bit, right? And you'll see this distance, this gap between the body and the belt that's basically what I'm referring to as the inflate or this um, repelling distance. So let's set it this to 0 0.1, yeah. And let's undo that and let's try it again. Click on run simulation. And now you see it is very close to the body. So that's what I want, okay? So another thing is that I don't want this to be that strong. So when I click run simulation, it goes very, very quick um, and it also shrinks the, the size. Uh, so what I wanna do is in the contract, let's, or contract, let's go to 0.1. 
so that it's less, um, less amount, and then stop it right there. And I think that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and use the move brush just to adjust this slightly. And you can do the same thing with you know, any, any area that is being overlapped. But then again, this is also the result of the uh, faceted polygons of the base mesh. All right, so we have the base now. It's sort of wrapped around the model. Again, this has a pose. So you are most likely working on a T pose or a, you know, a symmetrical pose, and it works exactly in the same way. You can also do this with symmetry. Now, the next thing is I'm gonna go into solo mode. This time, I'm gonna select the C modular. So I'm gonna click on the brush palette. I'm gonna click on C modular. And I'm gonna hover over any of the edges, press a space bar, and in here, I'm gonna find this slide. So this is slide right here, and that's gonna be my action. The target, I wanna slide not just one edge, I wanna slide the entire edge loop. So click on that one, click and drag up, and that way we kind of like sharpen those edges a little bit, and that's basically it. That's all I want. And if you wanna, you know, work a little bit faster with the next step, we can actually delete this and then add them again. So let's hover over the edge. Let's go to um, delete. I was just showing you that you can slide them, uh, but I actually prefer to delete them and add them after. So in the delete section or delete action, make sure that you have the edge loop complete. Click on that and that, and that way we have a very clean set of polygons. All right, the next thing is I'm gonna hover over any of the faces, press the space bar, and I'm gonna select the delete as well. And that's it, a single poly is gonna be the target. So let's go, yep, for the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one and maybe just one actually is, should be fine. If you're working with symmetry, uh, you might just delete the two of them uh, in the front, but that's about it. All right, so we have, we are kind of like, I would say 80% there already. So the next thing that we wanna do is start creating that knot, okay? So for that, we can do a few things. Um, if you think this is a little bit too uh, thick maybe to do the, the belt or to do the knot, uh, we can go and hover over the edge, go to slide. This might not actually work because there's only one. Oh, it does work, so that's fine. It's just gonna shrink everything a little bit. And that's totally fine. We can go to the move brush and then just bring this closer to, to the thickness. All right, so let's go back to the C modeler. Uh, but this time I'm gonna hover over the edge and I'm gonna click on extrude, this one right here. And I wanna make sure that the edge loop is selected. So if I click now, I can extrude this whatever I want. Now, Siri's gonna try to snap to the next kind of like set of uh, vertex, but we're going, we're going to ignore that. And the idea is that you can do this with a C modeler and then just go ahead and wrap things around. But I found a much better and easier way of doing things with the Gizmo 3D. So I, I just wanted to show you two techniques um, the one that I'm gonna show you next is the one that I'm actually going to use. I think it's easier, but you can totally do this with this way of extruding the edges, right? And just moving the camera and that sort of thing. The, the other technique is with the gizmo and you can extrude things with the gizmo. However, you can only extrude things that are thick. And at the moment, this is a thin mesh. So what we can do is go to the dynamic palette. This one right here on the geometry palette. I'm gonna click on dynamic. I'm gonna get rid of all the subdivisions so that it doesn't shrink anything. So let's remove the smooth subdivision level. And in the thickness, I'm just gonna add a bit of thickness. Perfect. So I think maybe a little bit less than that. And that gives us the thickness that we need. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. So once I apply that, because we don't have any smooth subdivisions, we're not gonna have any subdivision levels. So you see this is grayed out, but we do have thickness now that is not dynamic, it is actually mesh. So what, we can do now, let's go ahead and switch to the move brush so that we don't edit accidentally anything with the C modeler. I'm gonna hold the control key to access my masking brushes and click and drag to mask this area, right? So this is masking just this face right here. I can go ahead and hold control, click once in the canvas to invert it, and now I can bring in the gizmo and I can center it to that area, right? I can also, maybe from the top, hold the Alt key to um, unlock the gizmo and rotate things just slightly so that it sort of matches the, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, just sort of it matches the, the normal of that polygon. All right, so that's pretty much it. And now we can start with the fun stuff, uh, which is holding the control key and just dragging this. So I'm gonna hold control, click and drag, and you see, because this is the only unmask phase, we're gonna start extruding this and we can just rotate it, move it around. Uh, try to maintain the consistent thickness, but I'm gonna show you a very cool trick at the end, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, let's hold control, click and drag, 
start rotating things. So this is the most, um, I would say, the most manual process, but it is still a lot of fun and you can create very interesting patterns. All right, so I'm gonna start wrapping this thing around the belt here or on itself. Maybe rotate things a bit. So again, hold control, click and drag, and that sort of thing. So now that you understand what the, the basic steps are, again, this is very manual process, I'm just gonna jump into a quick time lapse while I finish wrapping this around, and I'll see you in a bit. So now that I finish kind of like wrapping these things around, I can focus on adding a little bit more of, um, you know, be more careful ab about how I wrap things around. So I'm gonna delete or remove the mask rather. So control, click and drag so that there's no masking. Now I'm gonna switch to the move topological so that it respects the continuity of the topology by pressing B, then M for move, then T for topological. And I'm also gonna go to the brush palette and Let's go ahead and open up the curve and click on AccuCurve. So by default, it should be off, but let's go ahead and click on. And that gives you a more pointy um, effect. So I'm just gonna start moving, for, for example, this area right here, I'm gonna push this like so, just to, again, th th doesn't have to be perfect, the, you know, the thickness. I'll show you a very cool trick in just a second. I just wanna make sure this is wrapped properly, or at least it looks more convincing than it currently is at the moment. So. Yeah, something like that. I mean, it's not too bad. I think it, it's, um, if you spend the time placing this or extruding the faces, you know, in a conscious way, you don't have to do this too much, but it's good to make sure this is uh, a nice setup. I think we are kind of there. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. You can also, if you wanted to, you could take, let's say this uh, left side and you could extrude it in so that you can at least see two kind of like layers of the belt, uh, but then, Again, that's just up to you. All right, so now that we have this at this point, what I'm gonna go for is a bit of a smoother curve. So I'm gonna click on the C modeler. I'm gonna hover over any edge, and this time my target is gonna be the bevel. So I'm gonna click on bevel. Uh, you can use the edge loop complete as the target, and that's it. So what this is going to do is simply add a bit more uh, resolution to the curve or to this uh, belt, right? So I'm gonna click on this one right here and drag, and you see just adds more points. This one here as well. Um, basically the areas that I think need to be nicely curved around. This part you don't really see much or you won't really see much, but I think it would be good to have it. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty much blocking things out with you know, as little polygons as you can, just to describe the main flow and the main shapes. And then you can go over and add as many details as you need. All right, so that's not too bad. Uh, perfect. So what I want to do is I'm going to delete, this is the next trick that I've been mentioning that um, uh, doesn't have to be a consistent thickness because I'm going to use dynamic anyway. So what I'm going to do is that with the C modeler selected, I'm going to hover any of the faces, press a space bar, and I'm going to delete, or I already had it here, but like selecting the action to be delete and a single target polygon. So I'm going to delete the end, this one right there, and the other end, which is going to be a little bit harder to access, but uh, is this one right here. So I'm going to delete that one. So now we basically open that or have like an open um, set and I'm going to go ahead and hold control and shift and change my selection to be the select lasso or my tool for selecting. And the select lasso allows you to select an edge loop. So if I hold control and shift to access that lasso and then ho hover over any of these edges and click on them, you'll see I just basically isolated that and the rest. So I'm going to invert the selection and I just want to keep this one. So I'm going to go again to the delete hidden that we used in the past, click on delete hidden. And now we have a single sided mesh that I can hold control and W to assign a single polygon. Perfect. So there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and tweak it even more by enabling dynamics of division, right? And you see it remembers the settings that we had. So we now have that consistent thickness that we can change dynamically like so. So I think this is going to be pretty, pretty decent. And we can also see how this is going to look when we subdivide it. So we can do this smooth subdiv, maybe two times or one time. And this is, uh, the shrinking happens because it is a very simple geometry, right? So another thing we can do is click on the edge, press the space bar and click on insert to insert a single edge loop. So let's go ahead and click on that and drag to the top. 
and you'll remember at the beginning of the tutorial I kind of like show you how to slide this up uh, let's do that again but this is the the reason I wanted to show you that because it's easy to manipulate a single row of polygons and then once you have this kind of cleaned up you can go ahead and create two loops at the top and bottom just to sharpen things so that when we click on dynamic at the subdivision uh, the smooth subdivision and the thickness we have a sharper and clean um, belt now if this is too sharp for you let's go ahead and turn off polyframe uh, this is too sharp maybe add a bit more subdivision so this is smoother um, yeah this might be a little bit too sharp for what you want maybe for a stylized character but if you want something a bit more realistic what you can do is turn off this pause subdiv if you click on that Siri is going to apply that um, pause subdivision or like the smoothness after adding the thickness so now we have a nicer smooth um, belt that is still dynamic so it's going to be really easy to do things like the UV mapping or things like that because it's all in a single sided mesh, right? And once you're happy with this, all you have to do is click on apply and then you have subdivision levels. Now, I'm not going to do that just yet, again, because I prefer to manipulate a single sided mesh. And let's go ahead and jump into the move topological just to adjust this further. So now I can see the thickness dynamically and I can just go ahead and start modifying it. Maybe I think. You know this is a bit too thick for a belt let's just reduce the thickness dynamically and let's continue adjusting the placement of these faces um so yeah the rest is just gonna be a bit more of a manual process uh which i'm not gonna go through the entire thing um again i think you get the idea it's just more of the same just adjusting the placement of those faces and tidying those um yeah, tightening the knot basically maybe with a larger brush uh, but this is what I'm saying, it's a lot easier to manipulate this or to, to arrange, make these changes with, um, with less polygons. Because if you apply this subdivision and then start doing this, it's going to be a lot harder. I think I'm going to leave it here. You, you get the idea. I think that's, um, that's working quite well. Um, if you want to tighten things up, again, just to make things that it's, it's very, very tight, uh, you could also use move, uh, the move brush for or a slide actually for the clothing so you could use um let's find it here this cloth notch basically it allows you to notch this i'm gonna exaggerate it uh quite a bit but you see it's kind of like trying to follow um <laughs> it's trying to follow this as a piece of clothing uh, so you can try that out or you can also use the move brush and as soon as you move it you move the entire thing like if it was clothing and one extra trick that i can give you is you can use this brush with topological um, restriction so with the move brush selected uh, we can also use uh, you know anything like the move uh, sorry the cloth hook as well just to move things around maybe this is a bit too strong so let's just go with the cloth move and I'm gonna click on the brush palette bring that in let's clear that up a little bit um, and if you go to the auto masking section here so let's open that one up you can click on topological so if you click on topological is essentially the same effect as having the move topological brush, this one right here. It would respect the continuity. So ideally, when you click, it's only going to affect that initial point that you clicked and not the rest, right? So that allows you to fine-tune this even further. But yeah, it does require some manual work, I think. And I would enjoy this anyway, so I think that's, that's the great thing about it. And keep in mind that we are manipulating or changing just a single-sided mesh. If I turn off dynamic, we have this in here that's going to be a lot easier to do things like like i said uvs or uh, you can wrap um, a set of i don't know details with an alpha based on the uvs around and then project it and things like that all right so that is this quick tutorial just how to create a belt let's actually get out of the solo mode and you'll see we have our character just with a belt not too bad right and you could do the same thing for anything any type of belt or anything like that will work just fine if you want to create that sort of knot if you just want some kind of like band that doesn't require anything else um, there are other ways of doing it so just as a quick wrap up to this tutorial for another technique or another tool that you can use you can use the base mesh that you already have if you already been working on a character whether it's dynamesh or a, a nice topology like this you could duplicate it and extract the section that you want and that that will be it so let me give you an example for let's say a uh, or a wristband maybe okay so i'm going to take the base mesh this one right here i'm going to duplicate it go into solo mode and i'm going to hold control and shift to access my uh, selection tools my lasso tool and also let's turn on polyframe and let's come here so i'm going to hold control and shift and click in this one just to hide that section 
and let's invert it so you'll see it is just that bit but it is exactly what we had or what we needed for the belt but it is following already the contour of this body because we are extracting it from this base mesh right so the cool thing about this is we can go ahead and uh, expand this or you know contract it whatever we want i'm just going to go ahead and delete hidden so modify topology delete hidden again so now we have just this wristband and we can go ahead and enable dynamic subdivision Again, it shrinks a little bit because of the same deal. <laughs> so I'm going to turn off dynamic, go to the C modular again, hover over the edge, make sure I have the insert and single edge loop, click and drag. And that way we can just click on dynamic, add a bit of thickness, a subdiv, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, so that is the, the wristband. So you see, it's a lot easier, a lot faster uh, if you have things like that. Again, the focus of the tutorial was on creating not just the belt, but also uh, a simple technique to wrap things around and create knots. So I'm going to leave it here, guys. Hopefully this has been of help and I'll see you next time. Cheers.